Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Councillor Vera LeFranc and I'm Acting Mayor and I'll be acting as your chair this evening for the Council and Committee. And we do have a presentation of, from Stephen Pettigrew and Tracy Woodhams today, but uh, given that we have such a large uh, concern about Hawthorne Park, we thought it would be really beneficial for us to ask staff to do a presentation to talk about the plan for Hawthorne Park today and uh, then ask Stephen and Tracy to come up and do their, uh, do their presentation. And so it's great to see you all in the council chambers tonight and uh, it, it'll be lovely to have your presentation, Stephen and Tracy. So uh, just a little bit of indulgence as we ask staff to do a presentation. Uh, thank you, Councillor Frank. Um, I'd like to start by just giving a bit of an overview of the 105 uh, corridor project and just to explain a bit of the background. So the extent is a road network that will travel from 138th Street over to 150th Street. Uh, so... so uh, oh, I'll, I'll have... Uh, pardon me, we'll have quiet in the chambers, please. Quiet. So please begin again, Mr. Engineer, and please introduce yourself. I'm sorry. Um, Councillor Frank, my name is Fraser Smith. I'm the General Manager of Engineering at the City of Surrey, and I'll be speaking to the broad uh, issue of, uh, regarding the 105 Avenue Corridor. Like I was mentioning, the 105 Avenue Corridor extends from 138th Street in an east-west direction over to 150th Street. The 105 Corridor was identified back in the 1980s and included in the 1987 OCP. Um, as it went, uh, evolved a little bit, the alignment actually was further to the north going through Hawthorne Park and was revised to go to the south boundary uh, in the late 2000s uh, to avoid some sensitive uh, watercourses in the centre of the Hawthorne Park. Um, the roads needed for traffic circulation in the neighbourhood uh, as we move forward into densification and uh, land use changes and the road will also provide additional access to the park and a Purdue and help with improving pedestrian and uh, cycle access. Um, in the uh, Hawthorne Park, there's an existing uh, park reservation bylaw. The bylaw only applies to this park and applies to six uh, parcels. Uh, this was identified in 1979 and uh, is identified in a corporate report uh, later this evening, the, the six parcels. It only affects those parcels in Hawthorne Park and no other park. Um, the suggestion is an alternative approval process which adheres to the community charter as a way uh, to seek input and currently there is 55 acres in the park and we'll be expanding it by one acre. Uh, the works that we're proposing um, following consultation that we have had with the community is actually a two-lane road with a pedestrian and cycle pathways, uh, but we have removed the additional parking in the area that would extend from um, the one approximately uh, the 141st Avenue through Hawthorne Park. Um, some of the benefits that we're seeing of the of the, um, of the consultation that we had was we were able to go back and remove the parking lane which uh, removed asphalt. We also removed the 142nd Street connection which was to go from 105 out to 104th. Um, we will actually be putting in pedestrian lighting and street lighting and we'll have access, increased access to the park. So uh, the net result of the introduction of 105 Avenue, uh, we will be acquiring five properties. The net increase will be one acre of land to the 55 existing acres. We'll add an additional 200 trees. Um, we will have to remove 250 as part of the exercise. The overall net would be an increase of 200 trees. 142nd Street connection will be removed as I've mentioned. Um, we're also going to be creating a new salmon rearing habitat area in the south area just above our road and uh, relocating an existing parking lot and an existing access roadway that uh, currently cuts through the park. The parking lot will be moved over to <coughs> excuse me, the uh, 144th Street and uh, the access will be off 144th Street to that new parking 
uh, lot. The uh, trail, or the uh, walk, uh, sorry, the um, roadway to the park will be removed, as will the park, and new green area will be, will be created. And new walking trail will be connected along the parkway as well. As you can see on this, uh, on the sketch, uh, the 105 Avenue uh, corridor with the rearing pond just to the north, removal of the existing parking lot, which is shown as new green space, and removing the existing roadway as well, coming out to the uh, 144th Street. The um, alternative approval process um, requires a uh, first notice to be given and we're suggesting that in August 11th, the second notice August 18th with the deadline for responding through forms by August 25th, 22nd, sorry, uh, 2017. The um, plan that we're going to be proceeding on uh, as far as the layout to date has been, is shown above. And uh, what will change as time uh, goes on and through the fall is the Hawthorne Parks Master Plan will be undertaken and completed, hopefully, and there may be other additional work coming out of that. Thank you, Mr. Engineer. Uh, do I have any questions from Council? Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Fraser, the, the hatch area to the north, I guess it is, up by 108, is that, are those the added, the area where we intend on adding to the park? And is there access off 108 to that new addition, if that is so? Uh, through the chair, um, Madam Mayor, the three yellow parcels to the north along 108 will be new acquisitions, and that will have facing uh, 108, and that will add additional park there and retain those trees. There's also additional uh, acquisition uh, down off of 140B and there's also addition off 144, which will be the new parking lot. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Engineer. So I would uh, like to welcome Stephen Pettigrew and Tracy Woodham to come forward and uh, to uh, appear before Council as a delegation to present your concerns regarding the effects of the 105 Avenue Connector Road. And just to note to our, um, uh, the uh, citizens today, this is not a public hearing process. So what will happen is Stephen and Tracy will do their presentation and then Council will have an opportunity to ask them any questions that they have. So thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, forgive me if I don't know the correct format. I was just wondering if it would be possible for us to ask for an additional three minutes of time to be able to, uh, to do our presentation. Let's see how it goes, Stephen. All right. Okay. Can you just move a little closer okay, also Tracy's to your mic? Oh, Tracy. The Biodiversity Conservation Strategy recognizes Surrey's biodiversity as a key foundation of a healthy, livable, and sustainable community. Preserving nature, including plants, wildlife, and ecological values and functions, provides many benefits of clean air, improved health, livability, reduced infrastructure, and aesthetic and recreational value. An oasis in the middle of a bustling city a sanctuary for the many people that have a need to clear their minds at the end of a busy day. A nature preserve where the sounds of the birds and the animals rejuvenate your soul. A place where your heart sings as you enjoy watching your children playing in the playground and the water park and breathing the fresh air that is a major part of the enjoyment of the park. I remember the many picnics and nature walks I took my kids on. The days when I walked over to pick them up after school and we stopped at the lake to watch the ducklings. The days when we learned about the eco ecological necessity of maintaining and caring for the park. The times we spent cleaning up garbage and learning that not all people care as we do. Peat fires have been a part of that education also. We've gone into the forest looking for the source many times. My youngest son still takes it upon himself to go through the bush if he smells the telltale peat smell. We are responsible stewards of our parkland. It would be a shame to think that a cigarette butt thrown out the window of a car could put an end to the beauty of our park. Our schools use the park to teach our children about nature and the science it takes to preserve the system. 
but that hardly seems relevant when our city council seems to have other ideas. My dogs love being in the park as well. In the summer, it's, a much, it's much cooler than the yard or walking on asphalt. We all enjoy the social time in the park. Even on the coldest days, we often stop to chat for a time. We get to learn about our neighbours on the other streets and become a part of their lives, much like it used to be. We have this wonderful setting to meet in. Our neighbourhood is a small town, Canada, in the middle of the city. We all have to work, but it is the recreation time that we have in the wonderful parks of this city that will keep us sane and happy people. In my opinion, if you allow this road to go through, the future doesn't live here. So as you can tell, this is a very uh, emotional issue. If I could please uh, hand these uh, petitions in. Motion to receive. So moved. So we've got about a little over 5,000 there? Yep, we've received it. Right. Thank you. Okay, so I'll get right into it. Not a whole lot of time here. All right. Everybody knows that parks are important. There's no question. I'm not going to have to fight with you and argue with you about, oh, this park, you know, do we need, do we need parks? Do we not need parks? We can all agree that they're important to our city. Right? There are places of refuge that we go to. We escape from the, the days and, and you know, the, the grinds of life and just go there and listen to the birds and the fresh air, and it's just a wonderful thing for us to do. Right? And who are we? We're a group of concerned citizens, and we love our park, and we love our community, and we respect you as a council to be able to listen to us and to hopefully hear what we have to say. So that's what we're up to there. All right, objections. I've run across a lot of objections over the last little while. And this, the most common one is, well, it's a one-for-one one swap. What are you really concerned about? We're giving you a couple acres, we're taking away a couple acres. It's all, it all balances out. Okay. We're not after swapping here. We're after preserving our green space. We're after preserving parks. We're after preserving what we have. Because you can say, you know, we'll give you something, but that's really just a, a promise down the road that, you know, that can be changed. We want to keep what we have so to preserve things. New habitat, the, the salmon thing sounds great. But to do that, we have to take out an ecologically sensitive area to make that happen. So we destroy an entire ecosystem to put a new one in, and then we have to wait 10, 15 years possibly to, for that to be established and for that to come to a, a balancing situation. What about the services? People say, they're telling me, the managers and so forth, well, we need to move the services under 104th Avenue to prepare for LRT and so forth. Well, what happened to this? I didn't see it in the last uh, corporate report. So, you know, that's something that still needs to be addressed. I'll talk about that later on. All right, and hopefully this button works here. We shall see. Um, great, look at that go. <laughs> okay, how is this impacting our community? So this is the community, right? This is, a, this is a representation of the people who love the park, who love the community, and there you go. So that's what's happening. These people are approximately standing on the spot. This is on 104A. Look at this. This is where the road is going to go. When I say road, I mean like the whole footprint, you know, the sidewalks and the, and the walkways and the, all the stuff that makes up the entire thing, okay? So we, I look at this couple here. 58 years they've been living there. They're, they're talking to me, tears streaming down their face. They're so concerned about their neighborhood. We're going to lose a piece of our area. This is near um, 104 area. So uh, they're concerned about that. All up and down the street, this road smashes through neighborhoods. These people behind me here, they're losing their homes. They're losing their neighborhoods. They're their neighborhoods are being disrupted. If it goes through, they're concerned about their children. They're concerned about the safety of things. They're concerned about traffic. They didn't move into there for those things. And we didn't even mention uh, George Road Elementary School. That's something that is uh, something we dealt with as well. So how about this? Look at that. There is this stake right through someone's beautiful lawn. And it's immaculate, this lawn that he has. It's just so, so taken care of right through there. How about this one? Look at that. That's crazy, right through their yard. And how did I come up with that? Well, at one end is a city surveyor's stake, and at the other end is another stake, and I just tied the line between the two of them. And this, so this is, this is 105A, and this is happening all up and down 105A, road after yard after yard after yard, smash, smash, crash, take things people by. People lived here, but these are 33 years they've lived here. It's not fair to these people to be doing these things. All right, so impact. Yes, it is impacting people's lives. Okay, let's talk about the petition. All right, so I've got a lot of grief on this one. Oh, you know, I, so the first six weeks, everybody's discounting the petition, doesn't count, doesn't count, doesn't count. My question is, where is the petition for the road? How many people are coming forward saying, Council, we want the road. That guy, Stephen, he's crazy. All those people are crazy. Where, where are those people? I don't see them anywhere, right? 
So this is what people want. They want this road out of here. I know this petition is not accurate. I know there's mistakes in it and duplicates. Everybody knows that. Okay. So let's take a look at this. We've got the GVRD, and there's people here from all over the city. I've talked to them. I've talked, and so have these people behind me. They're coming from North Vancouver, from Abbotsford. They're from all over the city to come and enjoy our beautiful parks that we have. So this is the, the wide view. Let's go to the local view, down to, oh, sorry that, down to the focus. And I thank uh, the, city, the Department of Engineering. Thank you very much for supporting on this one. Because initially they said, oh, poo poo, you know, that doesn't count. Only within so many blocks, it's a local park, a local park. And then thankfully through this, um, this alternative approval process, now they're saying, oh, it's a matter of interest to all Surrey residents. I 100% agree. This issue is, is all Surrey residents, not just the localized ones. So thanks again for the uh, Department of Engineering for supporting us on that one. Okay, let's go to the paper petition. All right, you can read those numbers. I don't have to go through it with you. You can see where they're all gathered. The one I want to point out to you is the 333 signatures. See that one on the bottom there? Okay, so this is... I, I went to one of your council meetings a few weeks ago. Or it, was, it was one they talked at the Flamingo Hotel. Remember that one? That was, I was really, really impressed. My first council, and I was so impressed with you because you're interacting with the, with the audience, and you're asking questions, and I was, I was just, I was just you know, I sat there for three hours, and I was, you know, I was, I was great, right? So this is the same sort of thing. All these people, remember the liquor store situation they came up to, the one down in, in, South, in South Surrey? Remember the uh, situation where they had the big building that was like 60, 600,000, 60,000, 6,000, that situation? We just had a few people there. You know, there's like 20, 30 people, a few petitions. Look at this. These are the people that are for the situation. And I can't help but thinking, if this were a similar situation, if it were developers that were trying to put this through, and if it was a developer situation, if this was a public forum, and we had all these people here, and we had all these petitions, I can't help but thinking that the council would interact with the, with the group, and I can't help but thinking that council would actually support this process. Why does it change? Because it's just a city, right? We're not trying to stomp in the city. We appreciate what you're doing, okay? But, you know, the numbers are there, so let's continue on. Yikes, we're out of time here. I need those three minutes. <laughs> so, I'll talk fast. The red zone is the environmentally uh, sensitive area. The red line is the, is, the, uh, is the road. The bylaw protects it. What about environmental safeguards? Right? Those are in place to stop exactly this. And what the city or the Department of Engineering is, is offering through the corporate report there is to do away with this. It's not right. This is there. It's been there since 1979 to protect this area. All right. So, and then the alternative uh, approval process, it bypasses environmental safeguards. It's not an acceptable thing. If the city follows this, uh, we feel that they're acting in bad faith by repealing this bylaw. Okay, snippets, here we go. Put you on the block there. I applaud you. All right, I really applaud you for your stance. I pulled this off your website. These are all your things. And look, at, you, can, you can find your own name there. You know, supporting this, supporting that, you know, overseeing parks, accounts of star checks. Sorry, I don't know how to address people. I apologize for that. Environmental safeguards, you know. Preservation of green space, not one for one. Preservation of park, not one for one. So your bios say that you want to support this sort of thing. All right? And just so you know, we're willing to work with you. We are willing to do a compromise. We want the city to win. I know the federal and provincial money has got money for you to do the services. We want you to have that money. So what we're willing to do is let's work together. Let's stop fighting. Let's work together as a team. Let's work together as a large community. So what we're willing to do is that we're willing to work with the planners and the engineers to allow the services to go through the park, all right? So you get what you want. You get to get the services off 104, you get them through the park, you get your money, right? You can still put LRT in, and we get to stop the road. Everybody wins in this situation. No road through the park, and through these people's communities, no larger footprint. Take the existing road, knock it out, put the services down the middle, rebuild the road, maybe throw a sidewalk in or something. Everybody wins with the stone. We can't lose. We just work together if we really, really want to do this. So um, that's pretty much it here. So here's our request. Oh, that's not a request. Oh. Can I pass this, please? Uh, motion to receive. So Thank you. This is our request. I've lost it now. All right. Um. You need to back to read it. Okay. Sorry. Bear with me. Uh, two months ago, I was drinking coffee and tea. I, I've, I've no clue what I'm doing here. You know that already. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pass this over to you. And this is a request. Um, I'll, just pass, I'll just summarize. I know what it says. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So 
it's basically asking you, it's a technical term, maybe you can put it up on the screen for them, is that okay? Okay, so it's our request, if I can paraphrase, we want to work with you. We don't want to fight you, we want you to get your money, we want the services, but we want to save our property, we want to save our neighborhoods. So you understand this more than I do. Read through that, and so, you know, but basically we're asking for the uh, alternative approval process. Don't go with that tonight, please. No, let's work together. Let's not fight. Let's work together on this, please. Let's have a community, a real community effort on this. I really, really, really would like to do that with you guys. I'm happy to sit down with, with the Mr. Engineer and, and, and Vincent on this. It's, it's fantastic. Okay, so there we go. In bold there, we request that the council pass a motion at the conclusion of this delegation using our suggested wording. If you want to change this, you know, but now I'll just go down. So here's my challenge to you. I'm challenging you as a city staff to stand with us, to stand with our community, to stand with the people behind me, to support us. We support you, you support us. Please, 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 let's work together. Let's save our communities, let's save our park. Let's get these services put in. Let's get you the money, and, and let's move on to other things that we can do. We, we're wasting enough of our time doing these things. We need to stop fighting this work together. So please, please honor our request. And thank, thank you very much. Thank Bye. you, Stephen. So, so just stay there for a second. I'm going to check to see if we have any questions from council. I don't see any, but I just wanted to mention to you that, uh, you know, I had a lovely meeting with you and many, many uh, people in the audience, and this is my neighborhood too. I live at 148th yeah, and uh, yeah. uh, 105, and uh, the road is going through my backyard as well. So um, I just wanted to uh, express some appreciation about you bringing your uh, group out here tonight. These are all very um, great residents of our great city, and thank you so much. Yeah. So I just ask you, you know, please to, you know, so... Thank, I, I, thank I, I, you for coming in, Stephen. So, okay. So, I'd like to call call for adjournment. So moved. All in favor? Contrary? Adjourned. <laughs>